You will hear a number of different recordings and you will have to answer questions on what you hear. There will be time for you to read the instructions and questions and you will have a chance to check your work. All the recordings will be played once only. The test is in four sections. At the end of the test, you will be given 10 minutes to transfer your answers to an answer sheet. Now turn to section 1. Section 1. You will hear a woman phoning to inquire about exhibition information. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 4. You will see that there is an example that has been done for you. On this occasion only, the conversation relating to this will be played first. Good morning. You're through to the events coordinator at the Birmingham City Council. How may I help you? Hello there. My husband and I are interested in purchasing tickets to the automobile exhibition, but I couldn't find many details about it on your website and I was wondering whether you could provide me with some more information. Does it open in June? The purpose of calling is to purchase tickets, so purchasing has been written in the space. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 4. Good morning. You're through to the events coordinator at the Birmingham City Council. How may I help you? Hello there. My husband and I are interested in purchasing tickets to the automobile exhibition, but I couldn't find many details about it on your website, and I was wondering whether you could provide me with some more information. Does it open in June? Yes, of course, madam. The exhibition will take place during July and will showcase the history of automobiles from the very first commercial car in the late 1800s all the way through to the present day. Is the exhibition open for the duration of July? No, madam. The exhibition will last three days, from the 1st of July to the 3rd of July, and then the cars will be taken to another exhibition. OK. Does the exhibition focus on a certain manufacturer? No. It will showcase a wide range of manufacturers. Wonderful. I'm ever so fed up of going to these shows and only seeing one manufacturer. Are there any opportunities to sit in or even drive the cars? There will be many opportunities for you to sit in the cars. However, some of the cars will only be available to observe. We are yet to be told whether any of the antique cars will be available to drive. However, there will certainly be an opportunity to test driving some of the more modern cars on a purpose-built track. That sounds like great fun. I mustn't forget to bring my camera, or my husband will never forgive me. I'm afraid to say that cameras are actually strictly not allowed to bring into the exhibition. There will, however, be a section where a professional photographer will be available to take photos of you sitting in a car in period clothing. Well, that sounds like it could be fun, but I assume the photos won't be free. On the contrary, one free photograph is included within every ticket, but each photo after this will cost £5. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 5 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 5 to 10. That's a nice surprise. Not many things are free anymore. I've been asking around about the ticket prices 
but I haven't yet had a definite answer. Is it correct that the tickets are £100, whether you buy them now or on arrival? I'm afraid not. If you buy the ticket in advance, the price is £110, but it's £165 on the door. Oh, goodness. I suppose I'd best pay for them now, then. Is it possible to buy tickets from you now over the phone? Yes, of course, madam. I'll transfer you to the box office manager, Mark Edgeworth. That's E-D-G-E-W-O-R-T-H. And he will probably need to take your credit card details and some personal details. Yes, that's fine. Before you transfer me, I just need to ask a few more questions. Will the exhibition be held in the Birmingham Exhibition Centre? I think that's where I went last time. No, madam. The Birmingham Exhibition Centre is currently undergoing some renovations, so this year all exhibitions will be held in the Summer Palace. Summer Palace? I'm not entirely sure where that is. Well, it's not too far from City Centre. Once you're in the centre, you should be able to find signs for the palace. If not, most people in Birmingham will be able to direct you. Mm, neither my husband nor I am particularly good with directions. Is there anywhere I can find this information on the internet? Our website will give you an address. Perhaps you could visit www.directions.com for more detailed information, and they should be able to provide you with step-by-step -step instructions. OK. And is this the best way to contact you, by phone? I think the most convenient way to contact us is inquiring online, which is much simpler than having to dial various different numbers to reach the right person. Unless you have any more questions, I'll transfer you now. No, that's great. Thank you for your help. That is the end of Section 1. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 2. Section 2. You will hear part of a radio programme about online exchange business. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 14. Now listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 14. Barter Online UK is a young, up-and-coming website in the United Kingdom where users can buy new and used goods. However, instead of paying with money, registered users instead exchange their purchase for an item of similar value. This part is perhaps the most complicated as the registered users themselves must mutually decide on an appropriate value, with value either being the recommended retail price, RRP, or simply how much they believe the item to be worth. The website has been founded by a group of four friends in the north of England. Originally, they exchanged their belongings among family members. They frequently found themselves swapping their belongings when they no longer had any use for them. They live by the motto, one person's trash is another person's treasure, 
and hate to throw things away. As more and more people caught wind of the idea and wanted to participate in the exchanges, the group decided that the idea had the potential to become a successful business venture, and so it did. Barter Online UK is a startup online business, which took three months to set up, and has now been running for around half a year. Despite only being founded a short time ago, the website has already garnered about 1,500 registered users, with 500 more than expected, a huge achievement for the founders. Some of the users are registered in the United Kingdom and Canada, with the majority from the Republic of Ireland. In order to become a registered member, users must first fill in their personal details, followed by their credit or debit card details, which will be used to take payment of a monthly fee of £5. As long as this fee is paid, users will be able to perform an unlimited number of online exchanges. Before you hear the rest of the programme, you have some time to look at questions 15 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 15 to 20. A multitude of items are sold on the website, such as textbooks, soft toys and tools. However, books for children and computer games are by far selected most. The exchange process itself is not as complicated as it might seem. Users can enter their preferences for what they would like to receive and also explicitly state what they would like to give away and the website will automatically pair up suitable users. If, however, a user doesn't want to give anything away, but would simply like to buy something, Barter Online UK does support a secure online payment system, where users can perform a normal monetary transaction. Despite this, the founding group strongly discourages the use of the online payment system, clearly stating that this goes against the intended ethos of the company. Although bartering is an age-old process, Many of the website's users are unsure how to decide which of their own items to exchange. It often helps to order items by popularity using the filter button provided. This will tell the website to find out popular items for users' convenience. To this, the founding members say, just put everything you don't want on there. Different people have different tastes, and you never know what they might be looking for. In order to aid registered users in their exchanges and to provide them with assurance, the founders recently added a new feature whereby on completion of an exchange, users will be encouraged to provide each other with feedback. This feedback will include criteria such as the quality of the item as compared with how it was advertised, the ease of communication with the seller, the speed at which the item was delivered, and so on. The friends believe that using this method, users will have a more transparent and trustworthy bartering experience. That is the end of section 2. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 3. Section 3. You will hear Tom and Danny, two students, talking with their professor about the assignment. 
First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 26. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 26. Professor Tomlinson, may Annie and I please quickly ask you a few questions about the reflective journal assignment? It's just that we're a bit confused as to what you want us to include and discuss. Yes, of course. What are you having trouble with? Well, everything really. To start with, what should be included first in the reflective journal? Perhaps suggestions from others? No, no. Firstly, you should include the study goals you set yourself at the beginning of the module. This section should have been discussed in some detail towards the beginning of the course by Professor May. You should be able to find her suggestions on the slides she has provided the class online. OK, thank you, Professor. Could I also trouble you to take a brief look at my bibliography and footnotes? I feel like they're missing something. Most of our friends' bibliographies are longer. Well, looking at this, Annie, I can see that you have used a wide range of resources, which shows that you have made effective use of communication technology. As far as I can tell, you need not make any changes to this although you might want to double-check that your referencing complies with the Harvard Referencing Style regulations. Oh, I'm very surprised you've said that. Thank you. Now I can set my mind at ease. Tom, you said you wanted to ask the professor about the achievements section. Ah, yes, professor. In the assignment guidelines, we are asked to introduce and elaborate on our biggest achievement in the past, saying which skills we learned in the process and how these skills can be transferred to various different future careers. The only problem is that I don't know what my greatest achievement actually is. I've only ever worked as a waiter in a hotel restaurant during the summer holidays from university. If you worked as a waiter in a hotel restaurant, you're bound to have worked with other waiters as part of a team. Would you say that during your time as a waiter, you developed any leadership skills? Yes, well, I suppose I was asked to become the team leader of the food and beverage department, but that's hardly an achievement. You might not think so, but if you write that you were offered the position of the team leader, it shows a lot more about your character. For example, that you're charismatic and work well in a high-pressure situation. I never would have thought to write that down. Thank you. I guess I should start listening to others more often. Annie, do you have any more questions, or are you ready to go back to the library? Yeah, I think I've got everything I need. Thank you very much, Professor Tomlinson. That was really helpful. I'm actually starting to look forward to writing this now, and it should be a really useful exercise to prepare us for writing CVs and applying for jobs. It's shocking how bad I am at identifying my strengths and weaknesses. Professor Tomlinson has shown me that I definitely need to start displaying some self-awareness. Yeah, Tom, you really do. You're always so modest. Modesty is great until it comes to applying for jobs. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 27 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 27 to 30. Oh no! I forgot to ask the professor about the section on identifying the skills gained through different activities. Do you remember? When it asks you, for example, whether writing an essay develops your study skills or your independent learning and so on. 
Oh goodness, we really should have asked him that. I've been having trouble with it too. It just seems like such a pointless task. What do you reckon the answers are? Hmm, I think writing an essay might be a way of identifying and resolving a problem, because you have to state the problem in the introduction and then solve it. I'm not so sure about taking exams. I thought they were supposed to develop lots of different skill sets. If I really had to choose, I'd say that taking exams enables you to become more confident in yourself. Do you agree? Maybe. I really don't know either. What do you think about the last two? Making class notes and presentation notes. Oh, it's so difficult. I think making class notes has to be a way of becoming a more independent learner. Because you yourself decide what the important information is and learn it. That reminds me, I find taking presentation notes is a disaster. The professors speak much too quickly, and I write much too slowly. That is the end of section three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section four. Section four. You will hear a talk on the research of the behaviour of chimpanzees. First, you have some time to look at questions thirty-one to forty. Now listen carefully and answer questions thirty-one to forty. Welcome back to my series of short lectures on apes. Today we will examine recent and historical breakthroughs on the behaviour of chimpanzees, otherwise known as chimps. The word chimpanzee is an umbrella term for two different species of apes in the genus Pan, which are the common chimpanzee. Or pan troglodytes found in West and Central Africa, and the bonobo, or pan paniscus, which are found in the forests of the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Chimpanzees belong to the hominidae family, together with gorillas, orangutans, and indeed humans. Current research tells us that the chimps broke away from the human branch of the hominidae family approximately six million years ago. And remain the closest living relative to humans to this day. More modern researches into chimpanzees have centered on their behavioral characteristics, once all biological and genetic factors have been ruled out. In this way, scientists have unearthed an unfathomable amount of similarities between human and chimpanzee behavior. Although much of this research has taken place through observation of captive chimps. The results are widely seen as an authoritative reflection of chimps living in the wild. Chimps live in large so-called communities, comprised of many male and female members, with the social hierarchy determined by an individual chimp's position and influence. Through such research, scientists have found that chimps learn and adapt through observation of others' behavior. Once in power. 
The alpha male is often seen to alter its body language in order to retain power. For example, he might puff himself up in order to intimidate others. While lower ranking chimps are noted to behave more submissively and holding out their hands while grunting. Female chimpanzees also have a distinct social hierarchy, with high social standing inherited by children. It is not unheard of for dominant females within a community to unite and overthrow the alpha male, backing another in his place. James Diamond, in his book The Third Chimpanzee, suggests that chimps should now be reclassified in the genus Homo instead of Pan, and there are many arguments still in favour of this. Male common chimpanzees are, on average, 1.7 metres in height, weighing 70 kilograms, with their female counterparts being somewhat smaller. By comparison, the bonobo is slightly shorter and lighter, but with longer arms and legs. However, both species walk on all fours and climb trees with great ease. Jane Goodall made a groundbreaking discovery in 1960 when she observed the use of tools among chimpanzees, including digging for termites with large sticks. A recent study claimed to reveal that common chimpanzees in Senegal have been using spears sharpened with their teeth to hunt. However, these reports remain unsubstantiated. Researchers have witnessed such tools, namely rocks, being used by chimps to open coconut shells and indeed crushing nuts with stone hammers. As scientific technology has developed, so too has our knowledge of the sheer extent of the chimps' intelligence. Research has now shown that chimps have the capability to learn and use symbols and understand aspects of the human language, including syntax as well as numerical sequences. As I mentioned earlier, the umbrella term chimpanzee is comprised of the common chimpanzee and the bonobo. These two subspecies are divided along the Congo River, with the common chimps living on one side and the bonobos living on the opposite side of the river. Over the past few decades, both of these subspecies have witnessed an alarming decrease in population density, with animal activists now working harder than ever to protect those remaining and encourage procreation. In addition, next week's episode will focus more closely on how chimpanzees in captivity are able to learn things through imitating the behaviour of humans, as well as how chimpanzees' behaviours have developed over many generations. Thank you very much for attending this evening's lecture. I hope you found it intellectually stimulating, and I look forward to seeing you again next week. Good night. That is the end of section four. You now have half a minute to check your answers. That is the end of the listening test. In the IELTS test, you will now have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet.